What's going on guys? So you were looking at my B&W tow and stow hitch. This is kind of my go-to hitch. Now I have a lot of go-to hitches that I go to for various different projects that I'm trying to do. I use my way safe hitch with the integrated scale on the side so I can pretty much see what uh, type of tongue weight I'm transferring to the back of my truck. And I have both ball assemblies for it. So I have the two and the two and five sixteenths inch ball for that. But it's a bit of a process to change the ball out. You have to remove kind of the hitch coupler ball assembly. You have to swap it out with the pin in the back and it takes some time. Uh, you know, typically during my rapid fire hitching up to trailers, this is the one I go to, my B&W. This thing is super robust, 21,000 pound trailer rating with a 2,100 pound tongue weight capacity. This thing is a beast and it fits specifically in the three inch receiver opening that some of the super duty models will have you have either have to have a one ton dually or a 450 i think which will get you that three inch receiver now uh, one of the other reasons why i like this of course is because it has the three balls so it has all three of them i can rotate to whichever one i need at that specific moment if i'm using my small cargo trailer it's going to be the two inch ball if i'm using my larger trailers it's going to be the two and five sixteenths I have these infinite rule locks that go through to hold it in place so people don't tamper with it or mess with it. I also have this one right here. It's got some surface rust on it, but it is far from worn out or rusted through. And that's the one that I lock it onto my hitch assembly with. So yeah, very, very cool. Um, has like six inches of drop and like five inches of rise, I think. Um, got this through my channel partner, sponsor eTrailer.com. Love this thing. But today's video is not about my B&W hitch. Even though I love this, you guys know I've featured these time and time again on my channel. Big fan of them, super robust. This is about a interesting hitch, one that, uh, that I've never seen before. So let's talk about it. Hang tight, I'll be right back. All right, so I've yet to open up this box. Inside, it contains what's called a Rhino hitch. Now, I know nothing about this product at all, and they didn't reach out to me. Uh, my sponsors don't carry this product. I know, again, nothing about this product. But what I do know is that there is an awesome lawn and landscape channel out there called Brian's Lawn Maintenance, who I've collaborated with before, and he is one absolutely awesome dude. You know, he shipped this to me. It arrives in the mail, and I'm like, what the heck am I looking at? And I call him, we talk about it, and he goes, if you want to see one really sweet hitch, you should take a look at the Rhino hitch. They accidentally shipped him the three inch version with the three inch shank, even though his truck has a two and a half inch shank. So he's unable to use this. And he's like, you know what? Who do I know that is guaranteed to have a three inch adapter or a three inch receiver on their truck? So he shipped this thing off to me. So really, really big, uh, big appreciation for that. Big thumbs up to Brian over at Brian's Lawn Maintenance. I'll put a link in this video to his channel. If you haven't checked him out and you're looking to start your own lawn care landscape company, or you simply want to learn more about equipment and tools that are used in the trade to, to maybe upgrade what you have to what, what's better out there and what commercial operators use, you definitely want to check out his channel, Brian's Lawn Maintenance. But yeah, we're going to unbox this thing and see what it's all about because... Again, that is kind of my everyday go-to. I also have Waysafe products, which I absolutely love. I even have some Kurt products, which I absolutely love, but I've never heard of Rhino hitches. So I'm ready to, to crack this thing open and see what's inside. Okay, so here it is. And boy, oh boy, is this thing absolutely massive. This is crazy. It's made out of anodized aluminum. So it's, you know, you would think it's lighter weight than it is, but this thing is a hoss. It is, it's heavy. I think the package weighed like 33 pounds. So it's certainly not a lightweight assembly. Um, it has a very innovative ball idea here on how you actually change balls. Basically, I think you just pop this piece out right here like this, and it has the two and five sixteenths inch ball in it currently. So you pull this out. Maybe you push it the other way. No, push it that way. You might have to use a tool to do it. Here, let's see if I can pop it out with my pocket knife. And it doesn't come all the way out, I don't believe. Nope, so it comes out to right about there. Then you take your ball that comes on this really nifty little carrying assembly. And I believe you pop that pin out too. Pin's not the easiest to remove. Not too difficult, I suppose. All right, so that pin comes out, and then you simply place it, lining up the holes with the hole here on the, the assembly, and then you put the pin back through. 
like that. I'm not going to set it all the way in because I'm going to put the other one back on. And that's how you swap balls out, which that is actually really, really convenient because it's not the process of having to remove pins or anything. Well, never mind. It is a process of removing a single pin, but the pins on the ball itself. So definitely interesting. So this is how you pop the ball in and you're good to go with your next, uh, next towing need. Now, let's put that away so I don't accidentally cut myself. Now, three inch receiver, max at towing capacity of 16,000 pounds. And I don't see a maximum hitch weight capacity on here. Maybe it's right here. So this ball is rated, looks like it's rated at 10,000 pounds. So the ball may not actually be rated for the overall weight of the, or weight capacity of the hitch itself. And this one doesn't say, okay, so the actual mount for this says it's rated at 10,000 pounds. And they call it convertible, which I've seen this assembly before. So, you know, this is probably going to be fine for a lot of folks and their towing needs, but when you get above that 10,000 pound rating, you're probably going to want to switch to a different ball, maybe even a permanent ball or a higher rated version of this convertible system. So this right here, I don't believe is actually manufactured by the folks at Rhino Hitch. Rhino Hitch produces everything else, and they also have this really cool assembly to be able to store these, but you also have to look at your hitch ball rating. And in the case of this specific assembly, the hitch ball rating is gonna be the limiting factor here. Now in terms of actual tongue weight, it's usually gonna be about 10% of whatever the max towing capacity is. So if this is 16,000 pounds, then maximum tongue weight's usually gonna be 1,600 pounds. But the claim to fame behind this thing is its ease of adjustability. The fact is you got several pivot points. Now I know a lot of people are gonna say that's a lot of potential failure points, but you know, quite frankly, it's not if it's designed if it's designed well, if it's designed to maximize the transfer of energy. So, you know, not one area is, is carrying the entire load, or even if it is that it's built robust enough to be able to support it. And again, once you get into these, these heavier duty, higher rated, um, you know, more legitimate style hitches, most of them have gone through all the testing to make sure because they don't want the liability of something breaking while it's towing something heavy and causing a potential accident. So the way you would adjust it is actually quite simple. You'd pop this out right here, you'd push that pin out, and then you have the ability of rotating this up or down. And one of the things that they say is really convenient about this setup is you can actually hitch this up to your trailer, raise or lower the tongue jack, and make adjustments to your height, and then put the pin back in. Which, I guess you could kind of do that with the B&W hitch as well. I mean, if I took these pins out and it was hitched up, I could probably raise or lower the system the only problem is, is this would start rotating and it might make it a little bit difficult for it to find the holes and line up properly. Whereas this one, because of how it's designed here, it's naturally going to articulate into a position for the pin to fall through the next spot because it's all pre-lined up. Again, if you take these pins out, this thing's going to want to move kind of back and forth and you're going to have a hard time lining up. Plus, even if you did, it would be kind of a two-handed operation if you were doing it. And if there's any serious weight on this at any given time, it might be at an angle that's difficult to line back up with the pins. So I can certainly see the value of something like this in terms of quick adjustability. Um, what I don't really care for is how far back it sits off of the truck. It looks like the overall you know, length of this thing is about 15 inches or so. You compare that to like the B and W, this one's probably maybe, well, you know, I'd take that back. This is probably more like 16 inches and this one's probably more like 13 or so. This is relatively short and uh, it doesn't take much room off, off the back of the truck. And if I tow this underneath or stow this underneath the claim to fame right tow and stow, then it doesn't stick off at all because all of this assembly is kind of underneath your bumper right here. This one, on the other hand, similar to products from like Gen Y and several other companies, because of this kind of unique system, this pivoting system, it requires it to have to kind of stick off further. Um, similar again to some of the other brands that either have like a, a suspension system built into it or just have some type of a quick adjustment mechanism that allows it to move from different sizes quickly. And again, that t generally causes the, uh, the actual hitch assembly to stick off the back of the truck quite a bit. Let's go ahead and throw this in the back of the truck, in the receiver, and see how it looks. Okay, so now we have it installed. Looks like it sticks off the back of the truck probably about 14 inches. Now I'm sure when I take the pin out and drop it all the way down, it'll be much closer because it'll kind of pivot down like this but it does stick quite a ways back. This is certainly a shin smacker if you're not careful. Now, 
what is what's cool about a setup like this is the fact that if you hitch it up to a you know a utility trailer cargo trailer something like that in many cases you can't lower your tailgate without your tailgate actually hitting the uh the tongue jack up front and you know that's a problem that i have with my small cargo trailer is i can't lower the tailgate otherwise it'll hit the actual tongue jack on the on the cargo trailer itself but with this setup it kind of positions it back far enough that you may not have to worry about that. Now, what that does in terms of sway and balancing and things like that, that's really yet to be determined, and it's more determined by what you're towing and how you have it weighted and balanced. But to adjust this, see if I can do this with one hand. I'm gonna pop the pin out, uh, and then this piece right here, I gotta slide out, so let me go ahead and do that. Okay, so I've popped the pin out, and then this assembly just moves like this. And I think it's like six inches each way, something like that. But yeah, so if the trailer's way up here and I pin to it and I want to lower the tongue jack, I can simply kind of lower it until it's at the ideal height to be able to pin it back in place. Uh, which is really nice. That's actually a pretty nice convenient feature. Now keep in mind, as you do that, it's going to radius out or in slightly. Looks like there's probably a total of about an inch, inch and a half worth of movement in or out as you raise this or lower this. But for most cases, I don't think you'll run into any type of an issue if you're lowering or raising a trailer because a trailer will roll. But yeah, this uh, looks really good. I mean, this is what it looks like when it's in its fully collapsed position, which also has it hanging down the lowest. Okay, so we are 11 inches exactly off the back. And when it's in its up position, let me pin that in place right there and I'll be able to tell you exactly. All right, in its up position, we are 13 inches. Eh, 12 and three quarters. So yeah, about an inch and a half to two inches off the back when it's fully out and it collapses, you know, not too far out, about 11 inches when it's in, which still is quite a bit more than the BMW, but it's not too bad. I mean, quite frankly, Again, if you look at some products like Gen Y and such, they can stick out much further depending on how you have it configured. You know what? The ease of usability and adjustment on this actually make up for a lot of that. So that is really, really cool. Now, what would be interesting to know is, you know, how much slop there is this way. And there's not really much. I mean, quite frankly, the only slop you see is right here in the receiver. But there's very, very little movement right there. And it feels very secure once everything's in place. Again, it would be nice if they did have a hitch ball that was rated to the maximum capacity of the actual hitch assembly. Because, you know, if you try to hitch up a, a heavy dump trailer, you have a lot of functionality to be able to do it. Again, the challenge you might run into is that the weight of the dump trailer may actually exceed what this is capable of without actually exceeding what the hitch is actually capable of. So it's always something you want to keep in mind. Very, very cool though. You know, I'm going to put this thing through the ringer over the next couple of months, see how it works for me, swap the ball out, stuff like that. We'll uh, try it with different trailers. I do like this really cool uh, hitch pin assembly where you basically pop this out of the ball and you drop another ball on. Um, it keeps you from having to remove too much stuff, but you do have to stow and, you know, keep the, the other ball available in the event you do need it. So that's kind of the same way with Waysafe, right? They include another ball, but you have to carry it around with you under your seat or somewhere like that. Versus B&W, they're all stuck on the same assembly. Um, I can definitely tell there's a lot of pride in terms of the engineering and craftsmanship of this product because it looks very, very well built, anodized, has a nice finish. I mean, this is certainly going to make somebody really happy if, if they end up with one of these. Um, it's really really, really a great looking hitch as well. And it's gonna probably spark some conversation from folks kind of wondering what it's all about. The functionality of it is actually really cool and how they designed the pivot point is actually really cool. From an engineering standpoint, how it transfers energy across the assembly looks pretty sound, looks pretty stout. I don't necessarily think of any one particular area that would bear all the weight enough to where it could fail. And even if it did, everything's built to such a robustness that I don't necessarily think that that would be an issue. Again, keep in mind that your max rating on here is 16,000 pounds. And then of course your hitch ball rating on here is 10,000 pounds. But this looks like a standard hitch adapter here. You could probably just unbolt this thing, throw in a higher rated hitch ball if you need to. So you can tow whatever you need to tow up to that 16,000 pounds. Um, again, I'm presuming that the maximum tongue weight is gonna be 1,600 pounds, because again, it's typically 10% of what you have there. And of course, if you meet that maximum tongue weight, you're gonna wanna be sure that the trailer weight at that point is properly adjusted, right? So if you have 
you know, 1,600 pounds on the ball here, but your trailer weighs, you know, a lot more because of how it's loaded up or balanced, and you want to make sure that you don't exceed either of these numbers or any one of these numbers because that can always be detrimental as well. Very, very cool. Huge shout out to my friend Brian over at Brian's Lawn Maintenance for sending this my way. Um, I don't get to see a lot of really innovative changes in the whole trailer hitch arena. There are some cool ones with shock absorbing technology and all that stuff built into them. There are some really basic looking ones that can tow huge, huge weights like Bulletproof has like one that's rated at 36,000 pounds. Even though it doesn't look like much of a unique design, it certainly is unique in the sense that it can tow like three times what anything that looks like it or anything that's similar to it can actually tow. So that's really cool. But this is certainly a very unique design. It's a beast. If you want to have a, uh, a pretty looking hitch on the back of your truck and you got one of those big old jacked up trucks and you want something that looks really cool with a lot of adjustability, this might be what you're looking for. Anyways, guys, um, I'm going to put a link to my, my friend over at Brian's Lawn Maintenance in the video description here. He'll probably have links to this on his channel. If, if they sell it on Amazon, I'll throw a link up there as well. But yeah, this is a pretty cool product. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please leave a comment below. I'd love to know what your thoughts are on this hitch. Please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and we'll talk to you again very soon.